In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get NetCDF files into ArcGIS. Now many of you will not know what a NetCDF file actually is. It's basically used mostly by oceanographers to package together geospatial information which may have extra dimensions like time slices or different depth levels or multiple variables, a highly compressed format. If you try and open it in Notepad, it looks like this. It doesn't seem to contain any data at all. It's highly compressed binary format that you need a special program to open. So what I'll show you is how can we look at the data to see what we've got. And the answer is we use a small program called Panoply which is available from NASA. And I've just opened the program. It instantaneously starts with an open file dialog. And I just select the layer that we're interested in, click open. And you see it brings up a data set to browse the window. And our particular layer is just there, uh, represented by the folder icon. And if you look just to uh, the right, you see that file name, know where it is, different latitude and longitude dimensions but we've also got several variables which we can then use to try and query and understand what our file contains. For us the most important variable which the file contains is TO, a seawater temperature and you can see here it shows you a huge amount of information associated with that. Degrees Kelvin, because of units, and then we've got standard name, etc. We now know what TR is. We can use that information in ArcGIS. Let's minimize this and open a window of Arc. We've got standard ArcGIS 10 install here. And I'm just, all I'm going to do is just drag our layer from Windows Explorer into the table of contents in Arc. And you can see that it doesn't look right. The grey box seems to be in some distant spiral line rather than where it should be. So we know there's not something quite right. So right now it's been treated as a standard layer. Just displayed with the default parameters. So it's never going to display in the right way. So what we're going to do is alter the net CDF parameters so we can display it correctly. And we find that in right clicking on the layer we're interested in, properties, and then you see that we've got a fairly standard properties dialog, but we're really interested in the NetCDF tab, which has appeared. So just click that. brings up variable, dimensions, band dimensions, and dimension values. This is what we need to change in order to make it display correctly. Now, if you recall, in Panoply, we figured out that T0, or TO, was our variable that we're interested in. So we're going to select that from this drop down box here. TO is our variable of interest. X dimension is obviously longitude or long. Y dimension is latitude or lat. And we leave band dimension blank. Focus on the dimension values below. We've got two, time and Z. And Z is just depth. And if we click the little drop down box on the other side, we see that there's only a single depth level in this particular output which is just surface waters for the English Channel. And the time, we click that, we've got 11 time slices, which may represent years or months. We'll start, we'll start with T0, or time 0. We'll click OK. What we first notice is that our grey box has now disappeared, so it's been moved to a different spatial location. I'm going to right click on this and click zoom to layer. And you see now we've got something which looks like it may actually contain data, but it's black. That's because we've got to calculate statistics and get these legend values changed. And right click again and our layer, go to properties, symbology, and I'm going to force it to recalculate the histogram. To do that, I just click in custom in the stretch parameters, click in yes, and now you can see that we've now actually got some real numbers in here, click OK, and our layer is now turned 
into a gray color matching the legend cluster. So that's for t for time zero. So I'm just going to change the name to t zero for this. I'm going to copy and paste this by right clicking. Very simple. I'm going to change this to t eleven now. For changing the name, so I know what I'm doing. So it's good to make sure that you know exactly what your information is. Right click on it. Properties. Ask us if you want to compute histogram, just click yes to make it go away. And in next studio, I'm just going to change time to time 11. Click OK. It's black again, which basically means, as you can see, we've got to recalculate that histogram by going all the way through symbology. I'm just going to force it to do it. And there we go. We now have T11, slightly different parameters in our legend. And you can see just how different that layer is, which means that I'm quite confident with what we've got there. That is how to get NetCDF data into ArcGIS. It will pretty much work for any NetCDF file that you've got.